uh, it's a it's planned by God, planned by Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. Um, so you say you saying God is a female. Uh, if I were to give it a gender, I would say a she, because first of all, the uh, human birth and creation on this planet happens through uh, the female. So it's it's you women who give birth to us. So so I relate that to the creation. So if if I was to give a gender to our creator, I would say she. Yes. Okay, so God the Creator, you're saying this is all planned. This is all meant to be. Oh, this is exactly a God's plan. To I mean, remember for how many years we've been talking about a shift and ascension to fifth dimension. We've been talking about this forever, and we have done a lot of workshops, seminars, work uh, on ourselves and with others, preparing ourselves for the ascension, correct? Yes. Yeah, so this ascension is where? I mean, it's not in another planet or in another star system, uh, or it's in our past, it's in within us. The, the shift to a higher consciousness, hap it's an inside job. So we have been talking about it, we've been yeah. waiting for it, and it's no uh, coincidence that all of a sudden in year 2020, where you have to have a laser vision for, for those who are ready, this is happening. This is our opportunity to go to this jump, this shift. And it's happening right now in this moment. So why would you say it feels so difficult? It feels so scary. You know, a lot of people in fear and anxiety of what's going on. It's real. Uh, I mean, people are getting sick. So, you know, if it's such a great enlightenment, such a great adjustment and time, why does it feel so bad? Well, it depends to whom it feels so bad. If you're really identified as a, an individual being, someone separated from totality, then yes, it's very, very frightening because you believe that your existence may end because you don't feel one with everything. But if you shift your uh, vision and take these glasses off and put a different pair of glasses and look at everything as oneness, then you will see that this is not a bad thing. I mean, I understand there are people suffering and dying. I, I get that part, but you will see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the wheel of karma. The karmic wheel has come to a full, full circle. And now it's doing a cleanse. It's clearing itself. So um, it depends how we want to look at that. So let's say somebody's really suffering physically right now. Either they've got an illness or they've got something else going on or they're looking terrible fear right now or they're you know, financially devastated and lost their job. How do they, as you said, take the glasses off and put a different glasses on when they're right. like, this is happening to me? Yeah. Well, by simply surrendering because uh, when things get tough like this, um, actually is when we really start to dig in and pay attention. When things are good, money is flowing, we can go to vacations, we can do whatever we want, we're buying things, there's distraction, there is no need for us to pay any attention to the truth of who we are, uh, to the spirit. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read the book from, uh, I'm sure you've read it a long time ago because you're very well educated. Uh, the, the Way of Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. Mm -hmm. At the end of the book, it says, we go to spirit when our foundation is shaken only to find out that it's the spirit who shakes it. 
yeah, a lot of people are all of a sudden becoming religious, going to God, are finding spirituality, and you're saying only to discover that it's really us and it's been there all along. Well, only to discover that it's the spirit who is shaking our foundations right now is to, to get our attention because our attention is on the other world, on other, on materials, on uh, marriage, on relationship, on money, on more homes and status and things like that. And the spirit is grabbing, grabbing us by the core and it's saying, hey, hey, you know, it's shaking us and it says, pay attention, look at me. Look, look inside where the real security is. Now, let me elaborate on this one. Um, my teacher, Punjaji, back in 1994, 92, 94 in India, uh, he always used to say, the only real thing is that which doesn't change. And he always emphasized on that. The only real thing is that which doesn't change. And anything else that changes is not real. Well, everything does change except for exactly your divine being. Right. So what is it that doesn't really change in, our, in, in this universe? When we turn our attention inwards, and we look inside, the only thing that is always the same, and it's always been the same ever since that we were born and ever since we remember, is the observer, the watcher, that which has always been here, the one who's aware of this body growing, getting older and eventually dying, the one which is aware of our mental process, and the one who's aware of our emotions rising and falling. And of course, of the utter world of what's going on. There's, there is one entity, one being within us that is always in this state. It has no ups, no downs. And we can discover this and it's not very difficult. You don't have to do years of meditation or spiritual teachings to discover it because it's something within us all the time. If for one moment, anybody with spiritual training or not, simply turn their attention inwards and they look for the source of their thoughts before we think, where do the thoughts come from? what's there before i think and if we bring our attention to that point immediately almost immediately our mind becomes blank and it, it, there is silence it means in other words uh, almost instantly we get a glimpse of our higher self the one which is here who's observing but it's not involved with what is going on the observer the watcher now and i've heard that explained like imagine that you're behind yourself looking at yourself having these thoughts and these chatter but the one behind is watching and who is who is you watching so you're saying you're doing it a different way so can you explain a little bit more about how do we turn in and look at that yeah the way it's it's uh very easy it's it's you know, right now I'm talking to you and your attention is on me, correct? Yes. Or maybe you look at your chat box and your attention goes there. So yes. your attention is right now on me. Now, if you had your elbow was hurting you and it, there's, you have a thriving pain, your attention will go on it, correct? Yes. You're paying attention to that or if you have a toothache. So it's just where your attention is. now. For a moment, we're going to shift our attention on anything outside and we bring our attention inwards towards the observer, towards this place before we think. Let's say, imagine that there is a, a, a lake within ourselves. It's a big lake and this lake is flat. There is no, the water is not moving. 
So, and it's absolutely silent. Thoughts ar arise out of this lake. Whatever we think comes out of this place. So let's trace back our thoughts. It doesn't matter what we're thinking about. Let's trace them back to this lake. So if I take my attention, only attention, I don't have to do any kind of breath work. I don't have to do any mantra or anything. Simply, if I close my eyes and bring my attention inwards towards this lake, this place where my thoughts arise, my thoughts come out of this place, what's before the thoughts come? And almost immediately, Stillness. yes, almost immediately, it becomes absolutely silent. It becomes quiet. There are no thoughts. And where there are no thoughts, there are no worries or anxiety or fear. But when we put our attention on the content of our thoughts, then we begin to suffer. And this is what is going on right now. The self, the spirit, is trying to bring our attention towards this place, bringing our attention on a place within ourselves, which is eternal and doesn't change in order to make us realize that this is the only real thing and everything else that you're perceiving, thinking, touching, smelling is not real because it's changing all the time. And no matter how hard you're trying to hang on to it, you can't. So this is the time. Okay, so somebody's like having a spiral of fear and depression. You're saying just take a moment to look inside and get still? Yes, I help him. I take him back to this place and put him in touch with this place. And the moment they touch this place, all the fear, worry, anxiety, at least momentarily, they disappear. Of course, the person is responsible on doing the work. But as you start doing it over and over again, the conditioning, the conditioned mind, which from childhood is conditioned to look for peace outside of itself. The human mind thinks, believes through our, our childhood upbringing that peace means when everything goes my way and I'm comfortable, then I'm at peace. But that's a false, it's an illusory uh, notion. It's not real because no matter how much you're trying to put things together in your life to be at peace, something always happens and destroys it. And so would a person have to do this several times? It's not gonna be one time. Like if they're, in, they're you know, going through the daily day right now and they're really worried about things. They have to keep repeating this until they kind of get a feeling of it and it kind of sinks in? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you're trying to undo a lifetime of conditioning and habit of looking for peace, maybe in, in Hawaii or in Bahamas or somewhere uh, beautiful and, and nature. That's where you're, we think we're going to find it, which is not there. It's within ourselves. So it's going to take time. Not a long time, but it takes a little bit of time and training and guidance to find it that actually it's inside myself and it's permanent. So when you find this place of peace, can you also see yourself with these negative thoughts? And if so, to change it into more positive thoughts? No, because that is a waste of time in my understanding that good thoughts, bad thoughts are the same thing. That's an involvement with the world of thoughts. So if you simply learn how to keep your attention on this place, then what happens is a shift happens. 
you automatically become the observer because that's who you are. The awareness of thoughts, the awareness of your emotions or your body or other events in the world, but you're not involved with them anymore. You see them, but you're not involved with them. So then what happens is slowly, slowly, the grip of the world that is changing all the time and it's in flux, the grip gets lighter. And as the grip gets lighter, it means your mind becoming more quiet, space starts to develop, space, space opens up. And this contraction that we have for out of the idea that I am an individual entity, I'm a person separated from the world. So therefore I have my own free will and I'm creating my own reality. That notion begins to disappear because space starts to open up. And as the expansion starts to happen and a sense of freedom and surrender happens. Oh, you know what? Because I'm not contracted anymore. I'm not really in control. No, my son, you're not really in control because if you were, you could do something about this. You're not in control. Okay, who's in control? I am, the I am. I am in control, relax. You're in the bosoms of Her Majesty, the Supreme. I'm gonna carry you, don't worry about it. So contraction turns to expansion and space appears. And then the shift begins and spiritual wisdom starts to take over. And then we see the order of the world is perfect and some force, some intelligence is at work here. Something that knows what it's doing is designing all of this. So you're saying like at first you might be kind of going, okay, now I'm getting into my place of stillness and then now I'm back in my thoughts and now I'm going back into this place of stillness. But after a while you should get to the point where you're always in that place of stillness and just watching your thoughts going on. So you're living a life being in this place of stillness while observing it. Yeah, I mean, you can help not observing because that's something we've been doing all of our lives and that's a part of us. We always observe. The reason for that is we're awareness and the job of the awareness is to be aware, aware of whatever is happening. Like if right now around your house, you hear the sirens on the street, there's a fire and there's fire trucks, you can't help but not hear it. You, you, you know, or if your neighbor's dog is barking really loudly, you can't help but not to hear it. So we're, we're the awareness. We are always aware of what is happening, whether it's internal or external. The, the problem that we suffer is we think, we think is my thoughts and my emotions are mine. And that's a false notion because the thoughts are happening in my mind and the emotions that I'm experiencing, they're not necessarily mine. There are these thoughts and the notion, the, the uh, emotions of the collective. So when we have the correct training of how to pull back and operate and relate to these from the point of view of the observer, then they lose their grip. I can we give you a question. We have a okay, question. Somebody's asking, how do we raise our vibration to get closer to the fifth dimension? Is what you're talking about being in the fifth dimension or is that different? No, the, to raise your vibrations to, there's only one way you can raise your vibrations to fifth dimension. There is no other way. I don't care who says what. It's just impossible to shift into a higher dimension as long as you're identified with your thinking mind you have to become quiet inside. If you can become quiet inwardly, it's impossible to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency. It just does not work. 
So the benefits of it, of quieting your mind, is that you stop suffering and you start laughing more because you're not identifying with the stories that you're hearing your mind is playing for you. So you're saying that you're not going to be as physically sick or emotionally worried once you get to this place. These things are not going to affect uh, you. I don't know about the physical, but, but you, I mean, these bodies are designed to get sick. So, and it doesn't matter. Many, many masters, awakened beings, they got sick, they got cancer and they died. So, but, so that part, uh, I don't have any claims on, but emotionally you become free because what happens is, let me put it this way. Let's say if I wake up in the morning and I feel depressed, so I wake up in the morning and the first thing I say to myself, oh, another shitty day in LA and it's raining and, and I'm in a quarantine and I hate it and I feel so depressed. This is a narrative I hear in my mind. Before I even try to do anything, I hear this story. Someone who's not trained will believe the story because that's what they're hearing hearing to they've been telling themselves oh i feel so depressed or i'm so sad or i'm so lonely or nobody loves me so you're hearing a story your mind is telling you and you're buying it but when so that's one way what would i do if i hear my mind tells the story to me I don't try to stop my thoughts. I don't try to manipulate my thoughts and I don't try to think positive. I simply hear what is going on and I tell myself, depression is here. The sense, the feeling of depression is visiting me. It's here. Okay. And I feel depressed, but I don't say I am depressed. I say depression is visiting me. It's like a big black cloud and raining is above my head. I acknowledge it that it's here, but I'm not it. So I remain in this place of the observer. I'm observing this emotion and I can't help not feeling it because it's overwhelming, but I'm not it. So, so you see your thoughts as an external to you. They're not exactly, exactly. And then it doesn't have any power. So maybe 30 seconds or a minute after it's gone. And then silence comes. And then maybe I get a phone call from a relative or my mother or someone who's in panic and telling me, oh, I'm so sorry this happened. Da, da, da. And then I may feel a little bit sadness. And I do the same thing. Sadness is here sadness is visiting me i feel it i'm not trying to push it away because if i resist it it will persist it gets stronger because i get identified with it i simply acknowledge that there is a feeling here and i'm a human being i'm not a robot i'm gonna feel it but i'm not it i'm the awareness of this feeling then it has no power it won't last when you start training, retraining yourself, you will see that hardly any emotion in your life will last from 30 seconds to maybe a couple hours, and then they're gone. They lose their grip. And in that transition, space appears. Things open up. It's very difficult in a way to say, what do you mean by space? Is that when we really think we're in control of our lives or whatever, we get contracted because we are trying to control something uncontrollable. Who would have thought in 2020, the entire world will shut down? I mean, the worst case scenario we have that we could compare things to was Second World War. And that affected Europe, part of Africa and part of Africa, 
but it wasn't the entire world. But now this is unprecedented. The entire world is shut down. Every time everyone's forced to be inside. And it's, to me, it's perfectly designed by, by God, by the higher self. You are forced to question your existence. You are forced to let go of this illusion of control. And you are forced to surrender. What do you surrender? You surrender to hi your higher self. That knows everything. Because, again, this imaginary control that we have, that I am the creator of my reality or whatever, okay, it's being really challenged right now. But where were you 100 years ago? Who was running the show? hundred years ago, who was running the, the universe? I mean, who is making planet Earth to turn around itself and turn around the planets of the sun? Who is turning the seasons from spring to summer and to autumn? Who's turning the day into night? Who's operating and feeding all the vegetations around the planet or the animals? Who's running our our digestion, digestive system, our, all the systems of the body. There must be an intelligence who's running the show. And it's definitely not me because I've only been around here for a number of years. I'm just, as an, as an individual separated from the collective, I have no clue what's going on. I'm a newbie. Something has been here ever since the ever since. That one knows what it's doing. So when we start to let go of this imaginary control and the surrendering to that, you can call it I am, you can call it consciousness, we can call it God. God is an old fashioned word and people don't like it because we're relating it to a this guy with a long, white beard with a stick that every time you think sex of the word sex is going to beat you up and punishes you. But I like the word God. Whatever you want to name it, there is a grand intelligence that is knowing what's going on. So what do I need to right now worry about it? Because I was in here 100 years ago, and certainly in 50 years from now, if that many years, I will be gone. But that has been always here. So I trust in that, and I recognize its presence as a living spirit in me and everything else. And it certainly knows what it's doing. And in this acknowledgement and trust, space appears things open up, contraction gives to expansion, and all of a sudden you, you become a part of the flow. And your vibration rises to fifth dimensional vibrational frequency. You rise above the third dimension because you're no longer operating as an individual who thinks is separated. You're giving away the illusion of your free will to the collective. And that which knows what it's doing starts to operate through you. So I'm being asked, what exactly is the fifth dimension? Is fifth dimension the, the collective consciousness? Or can you explain a little bit more what is fifth dimension? Yeah, fifth, fifth dimension is a unified field of oneness. It's a unified field of love without the illusion of separation, without the illusion of that there is another one in there. So when we speak of oneness, when we say it's all one, means that you and I are not there in it. We can't be separated from each other if it's all one. So they can't be two. Oh, we're all one. So if, I'm, if it's all one, then they can't be seven billion people. It's all one. 
So when your consciousness merges into fifth dimensional consciousness, means that this glass, I put this glass in the ocean, I filled it up. This is ocean water, but it's still the ocean water. So when I merge into fifth dimension, means I'm pouring this ocean water back into the ocean. And once I do it, where is this ocean water? Where is this, the water in this glass? Where do you find it? It goes back into the source of oneness. So, so then the, this glass of water loses its individual identity, which was a false identity anyway, into the collective, into the oneness. So fifth dimension is that. Great explanation. <laughs> so um, I know that you're working with, uh, I would say not, not individual, but small groups. Um, so what kind of things do you do when you're working with people in these small groups, especially right now with their fear, anxiety, worry about finances? So what yeah. kind of practices do you do with them? Yeah, ba ba the very basic of all my teachings uh, is inner silence. So I use various kind of methods, techniques to help the, the group or the individual to find inner peace, to quiet their mind. And then once I'm able to quiet their mind, then all of a sudden they open up and they're, they're unconsciously very open to suggestions. But so, so that's the, the wh whatever I'm gonna teach, whether I'm gonna, if it's a uh, teachings about um, a relationship or how do I relate to the world, uh, whether I wanna learn about how to feel touch the auric field, or I like to learn how to do distant healing, or whatever it is, I have self-love and self-love uh, issues, uh, abandonment issues, whatever is their problem, first I have to teach them how to become quiet. And then that shifts everything. Well, I don't know if we can do it, but I'm gonna invite, if there's anybody that would like to either ask, it'd be great if you'll come on camera, but if somebody wants to ask specifically, to just like, he can show us a little bit of how he works with us. So if somebody's brave enough to want to come on and they've got their camera turned on, I will turn, I, you know, I'll try to put you in. Or if they've got just a question and we can answer it through a question. So I'm putting that out there. So if you're interested, go ahead and uh, put it in the question answers or the chat. Let me know if you want to do that. Um, uh, meanwhile, why don't you tell us about I know we talked a little earlier, I think last time when we did the podcast, you were saying that you switch from the fifth dimensional healing to more of an awareness. So what, what is the difference between what you were doing with the healing work and what right. you're doing now? Right. I mean, the first 10 years of my career or nine years of my career, I was, I was more uh, guided to do hands-on healing work and shamanic healing and then I started the school and teaching the five levels of fifth dimensional quantum healing. That's the uh, healing modality that I was teaching. And sometimes I teach it, still teach it. Uh, in past year and a half past year, uh, which now I can see why, uh, I started to um, lose my passion for, do, for working as a healer. Uh, I still do the work, but not as much, and just wasn't gravitated in that direction. And, and something was whispering inside me to start uh, teaching awareness, giving satsangs, and having uh, more courses and workshops regarding self-realization. So that, that's what really happened. Okay, so if somebody comes to you and says, I just, wanna, I just want you to heal me. I just want you to fix me. You know, I'm sick right now. Um, I, got, I got, you know, a problem with my leg or something. Um, I, I think before you used to kind of work on them. Do you still do yeah. that? 
Well, it, yeah, I mean, it depends if it's an in-person or of course right now you don't work anyone in person, but um, yeah, if, if, it, if it happens and it comes on my way, I do it, but I'm not pursuing it. Uh, when I'm on a tour in Europe, my organizers do organize appointments for me on an individual basis in between my workshops uh, uh, for people who want hands-on healing. But it's not something I'm pursuing anymore. And, and but, do, do you think that like if you do healing for them, it, you, you're not kind of fixing the problem overall, you're just kind of doing a quick fix or, or why is that? No, I, well, the, uh, I never identified as the healer because I, I'm not the one who heals anybody. It, it's God who heals. So, um, so even if I, if I then and now, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just the, the spirit that heals will do the work. So whether I'm going to do a quick work or not, it won't make any difference. Uh, you know, let, let me just say one thing. I still have online workshops. It's a shamanic healing workshop that I do once in a while. I still, still enjoy doing it. But as I mentioned about a year and a half ago, I kind of felt like I don't want to be known in the world as Zarathustra the healer anymore. So, and that was a, just the, but I can't deny the healing power because it does want to express itself. And it does when it wants to do that. All right, so I'm going to try to do this. Elijah has agreed to put on a camera and come on. So I will see if I can get, I'm not very good technically. This new Zoom thing is new for me. So let's see if Elijah. Okay. Are you, are you there? Are you coming on? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, great. Can, have you got your camera on, darling? Okay, and, and you've got a little book. Hand side left corner of your screen. It's got a muted, um, a muted microphone. So if uh, you can, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to Elijah. So Elijah, I think your microphone's. You just click that, and you should be Is able it, to. Am I unmuted? Talk. Now we can hear. You. Yeah. Okay. And is your okay. camera on? Can you turn your camera on? You know how to do that? Yeah, I just had to. Yeah, I just had to get to a private space. <laughs> okay. So that I could. All right, so turn your camera on oh, when you can. And then, um, right. thank you. And do you have a specific thing that, you, that um, you'd like Zarathustra to help you with? Um, well, um, okay, your camera's still not I, on. Can I you, live in LA. Can, hold on, can you yep. see if you can switch your camera on? There, there, there we oh, go. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Is hi. it there? Okay. Yes, you're here. Oh, hi. Um, yes. So it's, uh, it's um, I live in LA, but I'm in Iowa now. I've been here since September and I've been, I have actually worked uh, with you, Gail. I've been out at the, out at the ranch and done different things out there. So thank you for, uh, thank you. for having us today and Zara Thrustra for you to be here. Um, I am, I, I am really just, uh, I don't know if it, it could be the, the depression that you spoke of, um, but I'm feeling really um, heavy and I have time during the day where I could be doing mindful things and I could be working on myself and, and continuing with my, um, my, my schooling for my, my uh, transformational coaching and so on, but I'm not doing anything. I just feel right. Like I'm stuck in quicksand. It's difficult right. to meditate. Uh, I, I just, I feel like I'm outside of me. Right. And um, I'm trying to look back and find me so I can get back in right. there. But uh, right. yeah, so I, I, I don't. That's a good question. It, I think, I think a lot of people feel in that way. Now's a great time to be doing stuff, <laughs> yeah. but you have so much in fear, you can't get anything done. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I, I, being in Iowa, I'm very fortunate because we do have um, that virus here, but it's nothing like if I were in LA where I live. I live in LA near Burbank and my whole community is shut down. My friends have told me there's like weeds, there's tumbleweed blowing down my street. There's like nothing. So I'm a little removed from that, but 
Okay. Maybe it's because I am so removed from my home in LA and I'm here with family and I just, I just feel right. out, of, out of place and stuck, not doing anything. Right. Okay. So um, I'm just going to throw something at you. You don't have to accept it or believe it, but uh, because I have no intention of convincing of anything, uh, convincing you of it. But mm -hmm. let's just put it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, we just play a little game. Okay, like we're a couple kids. Okay. We're three kids. We want to have fun. Okay. Right? Okay. So do you feel mm -hmm. this heaviness right now? Um, yeah, I do. I actually right. I feel like it, it, I feel a difference in my heart center lately. Like there's right. something maybe sitting right here. Right. right. Okay. So, so I, I just want to, I'm repeating this to make sure I understand and we're, we're in alignment with each other and I'm not misunderstanding you. Uh, you're trying to get things done. You know, you know, you know it in a way all you've done the courses, you've done the trainings and you know, you should be meditating or, or bringing your training into practice right now, but nothing's happening. You're trying to jumpstart yourself, but nothing happens. And you feel exactly. this heaviness. You feel this heaviness. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this heaviness and this, this story you tell me is being, being seen. You, you're seeing it. You're seeing it as happening, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So where are you that you can see this? Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being the witness. Um, I, I, right. I, 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 I'm trying, but I'm definitely. I'm right. not. I'm, okay. I'm totally. Right. I, I, I understand. I hear you. Yeah. I, I got it, Elijah. Elijah, when I call you, all right, or you refer to yourself, where do you think your seat is? Where you know, let's say you are sitting somewhere inside yourself, where do you think this chair, this seat is? Is it, when I refer to you, you think you're here or you're here or you're in your lower part of your body? Um, I, my heart. You are at your heart. Okay, mm -hmm. so when I refer to you, you're not here. You don't refer to yourself as here. No. No. Okay, good. All right. Now, this, this is what I would like you to do. So kind of step back. It's like you're going back. Okay. You're going a little bit back. You imagine that you're coming outside of your body, right? In a way. And you're looking, mm -hmm. at, you're looking at Elijah and you're seeing this heaviness and that there's a person sitting there is kind of frozen incapable of doing any of the things and it's in a heavy space can you see her yes you can mm -hmm. okay so from this place that you're seeing seeing her where you are are you less aware or more aware? Uh, I'm sorry, don't understand. Am I more okay. aware of right. Let me put it what this I'm way. seeing or more aware? Okay. No, uh, forgive me. Let me rephrase myself. You're aware of this heaviness happening to you right now, correct? That you're frozen. Okay, so you are aware of this, this thing, correct? And you are aware, like a few months ago, you were doing things and you had energy and you were hopeful with life and everything. Am I correct? Yes. Before the coronavirus, were you aware of your status wherever you were? 
yes. Yeah. Okay. So then, and uh, then mm -hmm. you were aware that you were energetic, and now you are aware that you're heavy. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so has any of this affected your ability to be aware? No. No. So because awareness. I'm aware, I know it. <laughs> yeah. So awareness has not changed. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Now I want you to bring your attention on the fact that your awareness, not a person you think you are. Can you do that? Can you shift your attention and bring your attention on awareness rather than a woman who's going through heaviness? Mm -hmm. can, yes. can you do that? Now, when you bring your attention mm -hmm. on the awareness that you're aware, is there a problem there? No. No. So awareness doesn't have an issue. It's solid, it's still, mm -hmm. and doesn't have a story. Right. when you shift your attention on just being aware not what you're aware of okay because earlier you said i'm aware that i'm heavy i'm frozen i lost my juice i can't do anything i don't want to do anything you became aware of that state mm -hmm. that awareness remains the awareness. So you, rather than putting your focus on your current state of being, you shift your focus and put it on the fact that you are aware of a story which is happening to Elijah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, yes. mm -hmm. in this place, that you're shifting your aware, you're shifting your focus from Elijah, a woman in in Ohio, you said? Iowa. Iowa. To just mm -hmm. the awareness from who you think you are and your story. You're shifting your attention to the fact that the, you are the awareness. Shift your attention. And now tell me if it's quiet everything or not. Yes, um, yes, I feel uh, a sense of um, lightness, feel lighter um, in my I just feel lighter um, and more of a sense of calm, peace. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Keep doing that. Keep putting your attention on your part of you that is aware, not what it's aware of. Your ability to be aware has not changed before Corona and right now. It's the same awareness that it was before. And that's who you are, sweetheart. That's the truth of yourself. The rest of it are states. The states, they can come and go. You can be happy, you can be sad, you can be physically good, you can go through sickness, you can go up and down financially, but the one who's aware of it is not going to be less aware or more aware, remains the awareness. Shift your attention on it and you will see that you are completely free.
and you discover a deep inner silence and freedom. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're feeling it right now, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Wonderful. It's almost, um, it's like I feel in the, the, the place of, of me, the awareness and not the awareness, but the space of seeing the awareness and not owning it or being it, this here it's almost as if it's um, this part of me is sending love to to that to that awareness that is uh, almost making it um, softer. Yes. Um, yeah. It's 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 that that sending love to it, not owning it, but just sending love to in it and acknowledging is making it uh, the energy of it softer kind yeah. of like from a basketball which is hard and bumpy to like a soft cloud is what it seems right. like now with right. that being and, yeah and mm -hmm. almost it's immediately something shifts because we only been together mm -hmm. for a couple of minutes Mm -hmm. Maybe Alicia, you could um, post tomorrow, the next day. You know how you're feeling. If it's you know what difference it made, post on our Facebooks, right? What do you think? Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So on 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 your Facebook, Gail, one, or is there send us a note. Send us a note. And this... Tell us you know how it affected you and how how it is yeah. going forward. Because yeah. this is on your Facebook Live too, right? So I can post there. Yeah, anyway, we'll get the message. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank just, you. Just know that the ability to be aware, your power of awareness, it never changes. It's the same awareness that you had when you were five years old. You still were aware of being alive. You didn't know about these things, but you knew that you are. When you were nine, 10 years old, you knew that you are. It's the same awareness that was aware of its surrounding or mental process. And it's the same awareness before coronavirus. And it's the same awareness now. So that is a part mm -hmm. that never changes. And that's the part which is free. Mm -hmm. If you're able to bring your attention to that part, all of a sudden, what happens is expansion takes place because you start surrendering and you're relaxing into that place. There's no expectation. It's simply aware and there's no pressure that mm -hmm. I need to meditate or I don't, or I'm feeling anxiety or I don't. You are at this place, which is aware of anxiety coming and you're aware of anxiety going, but you're not it. And then you will see that you're really, truly free. And that opens you. up. Yeah, you. you're welcome. You're welcome, my sister. And I think that was a great example for a lot of people because I think, you know, that was relevant to a lot. So I'm going to say goodbye, Alicia. We're going to switch you off. Okay. And um, thank, well, you. And thank you, Zarathustra. Thank you, Gail. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. And um, so, do you want to share with us a little bit more about Zarathustra, what you've got going on, how people connect with you? Uh, yeah, I, um, I do a, um, a free webinar. It's my 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness, it's a, um, a design to free you from fear, worry, and anxiety and suffering. I have been doing it for past three years and I do it every Wednesday from 10 to 11.30 in the morning, uh, California time. Uh, I'm also uh, coming up with a 
weekend workshop, um, which is uh, it's designed to free yourself from fear, worry, and anxiety, and prepare yourself for the ascension to fifth dimension. And that's, uh, I'm gonna be posting it very soon. Um, I also, uh, three months ago, uh, decided that for the first time, offer a private mentorship VIP training program, which is a four month, four month training program for those uh, clients of mine who are very serious about their spirituality and they seriously want to work for themselves. So, and I do that too. Um, now that I'm not touring and I'm not traveling, I have, pl I have plenty of time to work with people. So this is what I have going right now. And your website? My website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, zaratustra.tv. And uh, uh, yeah, that was ahead. wonderful. I mean, yeah. that was so enlightening. I learned a lot today. Well, um, thank you, Peter. Yeah, um, I think it's been it's different uh, and a closer. I think it's uh, more of an overall awareness than even you were teaching a couple of years ago. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate you inviting me. Um, and okay. I'm available. Feel free to invite me again. I'll be more than happy to show up. That, that would be wonderful. So maybe we'll do this again, uh, maybe ne in a few weeks time or something we can yeah. talk about. Let's see. So if you've got any other questions um, or comments, if you post them either on my Facebook or Zarathustra's Facebook, and then we can get some ideas. So when he comes back, maybe in a couple of weeks, you know, what, what kind of things you'd like to go over. So thank you everybody for yeah. listening. Can, can I say something before we uh, disconnect? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, to all of my brothers, sisters watching, I just, I would like you to know that I understand what is going on and I understand that there's a lot of worries and uncertainty and I understand a lot of people are going suffering and uh, they're going through financial loss. But what I have to offer to you is just if you don't want to do anything, simply trust, trust in the spirit, trust in God. This is a very good time when all the doors are closed and there's nowhere to go and we have exhausted all of our options, it's the time to surrender to the spirit and trust that God will take care of you. Everything will be handled perfectly, miraculously. And you can examine this by looking at your past and just take a look at how many times you were stuck in your life. Somewhere, your car broke down in the middle of the desert. You were completely desperate. You went through a divorce and, and you didn't know where to go and you lost your kids and job and everything. And all of a sudden a door opened up. Always in the last moment, something opens up and some help appears. And that are the, those are the times that God comes and help us and saves us. Just stay in that trust if you don't want to do anything else, that everything will be taken care of. Thank you very much for your time. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. God bless. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.